Hi, Judy from Witch Peace Craft. Welcome to today's video. Um, it's Sunday here and I apologise for any background noises you hear. My neighbour has a obsession with using a leaf blower on Sundays. But hopefully it won't get too loud and we can get through it. So it's cold in the tropics. Hence I am wearing my campfire cardigan. Cold for us is it's like 20 Celsius. And being Sunday, I can't remember what that means in Fahrenheit. But yes, I've been wearing my campfire cutting I made last year from the tutorial by Ophelia Talks. The one that I made probably two sizes too big for me because I thought I was bigger than I was. Anyway, it keeps me nice and warm. On with the video. Smells like yarn. Should be a good sound. Not when you buy yarn that smells yucky. So not last week, week before, I went a little crazy online buying yarn and doing different stuff. I had been inspired by a fellow podcaster to try something new and I wanted to do it special. So I went searching online and I found an Australian company who sold Noro yarn, which I've always wanted. and I've always wanted to try Noro's Silk Garden Light yarn. Now they had it out at a reasonable price, probably even with freight, similar to Wool Warehouse, but without Wool Warehouse freight. And I thought that was pretty good. And they had the color I thought I would like. So the parcel arrived early this week with the other things that I bought. But the first thing I noticed when I opened it was a funny smell. Yes, the yarn smells. This is the Noro yarn I bought. I just have to put that there. And it smells. Now, it's not a strong smell, but it is very unpleasant. And I don't believe Noro yarn smells like this. Um, Silk Garden Light is, um, from memory, no, 45% silk, 45% mohair and 10% wool. It is a beautiful yarn, but the smell is very unpleasant. Reeves had brought the parcel home, so he was there when I opened it, and he smelt it, and he said, it smells like yarn that has been stored for a very long time in a place that doesn't have airflow. He said, you know when you go to a charity shop and you smell yarn and go, mm, no, that smells old? He goes, that is the smell, and it is unpleasant. Um, so I'm very disappointed in getting this yarn and no, it wasn't overly expensive, but it wasn't cheap either. Um, what will I do with it? Well, I could over dye it and hope that takes the smell out of it or I could just felt it and hope that gets rid of the smell. But yeah, very, very disappointed. I did weigh the balls because they felt light on, but they are true to weight. They are 50 gram balls. So that was one of my purchases from this company and it was very disappointing. I'll just put that up there. I also bought some higher knitting needles. I want to try those. I've never had a set. They were reasonably priced and I bought a set of those in a 2.5 millimetre, 100 centimetre for a large project and I'll give those a go. I did buy something else. I won't share that with you. Um, that was disappointing too, but that could be because I didn't really look at it properly when I bought it. The company is called Knitting Co Australia, I believe. Oh, I can't remember. They're in New South Wales. The parcel arrived with a packing slip and there was very little communication on when it would arrive. What did I buy from them again? They have quite a large website and they do have some good stuff on there, but I doubt I would try their yarn again for fear it would come smelling unpleasant. I'm really quite fussy about smelly yarn, perfumes around yarn, my um, pets. No, I've got a dog. He's not allowed in near the yarn. I don't crochet with him next to me. Um, mainly because people are allergic and they don't want to get products or gifts that have dog hair or smells in them. I know some people have cats and they don't care and sometimes my hair get caught up in what I crochet but it's just me. I'm a bit like that. 
So that was my first acquisition to arrive in the week that was disappointing. But the next day was uplifting. Um, I had coffee and a catch up with Doreen, Emma's mum. Emma is off to school camp. She probably is there by now. And um, yes, she's in team yellow. She gets a yellow t-shirt and a yellow hat and she could dress up her wheelchair with yellow streamers and dress up for the school camp. So we went shopping at Spotlight and a few other places. I bought her a yellow tutu she can wear over her bike pants and we bought some streamers and some fluoro yellow shoelaces. She's going to look awesome and I really like the school she's going to now. They are so inclusive and they never ever forget about Emma being included. So while at Spotlight I've always wanted to try the Cocoon Spotlight yarn. Now Mel from Colours of the Outback talks about it on one of her videos please check it out but we've never had it in stock and when we went to spotlight there was a sale on with yarn bins and lo and behold they'd got some cocoon yarn in in the bins now these bins can be quite deep so I am always reluctant to try and bend over and rummage through them but Doreen is a lot taller and she helped me pull out some cocoon yarn now they are and I've probably got some I'll show you this pack there are five balls in a pack, 50 gram balls for $5, which I thought was a real bargain. It is, and I, the thing about it is being a sale bin, there was a lot of orange, but there were no two packs the same. That's orange going to darker. There was a lighter orange. We couldn't find two packs the same, but Doreen picked these colors for me to make a charity project, which I'll get around to. That was another disappointment this week. And yes, this yarn does not disappoint at the moment. It is. Smells. No smell. Lovely. It's 100% anti-pilling 8-ply, 3-weight yarn. It's called Cocoon. And it is lovely and soft. I really like that. It is a wearable product if you make something with it. So they were my three packs from Spotlight. Not disappointing. I was really happy with that. Charity projects, disappointing. I got an email from Lincraft, which is another store, big store here, saying that they were having a promotion knit for charity, supporting Kogo, knit one, give one. There are some um, prizes like $50 vouchers and a big prize at the end, but it wasn't that. I've always thought I should knit something for Kogo it is mainly south in Victoria and Tasmania, I believe, because that's where the colder climates are. But I don't mind sending things away. And I thought, oh, I'll make a project. I didn't read the fine print. You have to use Lingcraft yarn bought from Lingcraft. That sort of left me a bit, hmm. But I was going to Lingcraft on the weekend for their 40% off sale because they have a yarn I really love and I think they are going to discontinue it. It is Lime Brands Wool Spun and I did buy three of those. Now this, I don't know if you can tell in my light here, this is the colour. Can you see how variegated yarn changes? This is called Mesa Print and this is called Mesa Print but it has a bit of orange in it. That doesn't worry me. It is beautiful, soft yarn I love wool spun it was reasonably priced it used to be about eight or nine dollars it was four dollars and I still think I got 40% off the four dollars because there's very little lion brown yarn there now I think they're going to discontinue it there was a stage there where they only stocked um, yarn by Lincraft and that's all you could and the patterns there were Lincraft patterns um, when I asked one of, years ago when I asked one of the attendants um, something about substituting yarn she said we are only allowed to recommend Lingcraft so they are a funny store they're not always best at the customer service which brings me to the Kojo charity project so at the front of the store across from the tills is a table with some discounted yarn promoting their Kogo charity project and I thought, well, I'll buy some of their yarn and do a project. So I did pick some of the yarn. I bought four 
because I had a special project in mind. These four colours in the DK Mark Double Knitting Link Craft Yarn. When I went up to the checkout, I did say to the girl serving me, and there's only two ever on there, it's always you can't find anyone to serve you. I asked her, once the project is made, do I drop the Kojo project in here? And she looked at me blank. And I said, you know, the Kogo charity knitting promotion you're having. She goes, I don't know what you're talking about. So I stood aside. I pointed to the table like this. And I said, maybe you should read the posters you put up in your store when you stock something. I was disappointed in their lack of product knowledge on what was going on in their store, but it is always the same at this Lincraft store. I don't know who manages it, but they don't spend much on training. I did go out the car and complain to Think, and he said, well, you know, every time we come here, you rarely buy anything or you come out complaining, maybe we shouldn't come here anymore. I did get on their YouTube channel, Lincraft channel, and the video promoting the Crow Joe uh, Kogo charity project and told them how disappointed I was in the service and the information and the product knowledge of the staff. I also think it's mercenary that they support a charity only if you buy their yarn, which increases their sales and turnover, which got me thinking, and I should have checked before I did the video, but maybe you can leave a comment in the description below and let me know in the comment section below. Lion Brand do a hat not hate program and the hat has to be 70% blue. But I've never checked if Lion Brand require you to use Lion Brand yarn. Because the videos I've watched, I don't think everybody uses Lion Brand yarn. Maybe you can let me know. Is the stipulation that it has to be Lion Brand yarn? Promoting Lion Brand yarn and increasing their sales. Because I think this is a mercenary advertising to increase your profits and I let Lincraft know I am not backwards in coming forwards with my opinion. Let me know what you think. Do you like knitting for charity um, and do you mind if they stipulate that it has to be a yarn bought from a certain store? We have Far North Queensland Crochet for Cancer and where we meet is across the road from Spotlight and what Spotlight have done because there are so many of us that go across the road after the meeting and buy yarn they have given us like a little membership card that gives us 30% discount on any full price yarn we want to buy. And there are a lot of ladies in this group. So that, you know, I've used it once. They do have quite good sales and I wait for those for charity. But you can get 30% off any full price yarn because you knit for charity. They don't say what charity you have to give it and how much you have to buy. Anyway, my opinion is I think it's mercenary to support a charity and put such stipulations in. That was my disappointment on charity knitting, but I will still make something for Kojo. I have joined the group and I will mail it directly because that doesn't bother me. I won't be taking part in the Linkraft promotion because it affects my principles, my moral high ground. Some of you might not agree with me. Now, the other thing I did, because I have been... Having quite late nights with a little puppy. I was online. Oh, I got an email from International Wildlife about, um, I guess, supporting uh, polar bear conservation. So I bought a bracelet. It is in some sort of gemstone. I forgot to check. It has a little polar bear on it. And I have a polar bear meat hoppin'. She's a female polar bear of Canada. Um, this scanning code I scan that and up pops tracking of where she's been and what she's you know the areas around Canada where she's been she is a 629 polar bear expectant mother and has a new mum she's had at least six cubs in her lifetime and she is successful and resilient Six cubs is great. When I went to the Arctic to, um, and I did some seminars on polar bears, um, it, they were saying that way back, polar bears used to have about three cubs and two to three would survive. 
but with our ever-changing environmental changes, polar bears were lucky to be having two cubs and generally only one survived. I don't know if I've mentioned before, they'd also done research that the new cubs being born, their fur was fire retardant because of all the plastics that find their way into our ocean and other chemicals. So yeah, I'm really happy that I have a polar bear to track off the coast of Canada. Trust me, when we are allowed to travel internationally, it is. There's London to see my son, the Shetland Islands for knitting and crocheting of wool, and Canada, all of Canada, I would love to see. I cannot wait, and I am saving for that day. So the other thing is I mentioned our little puppy Saxon. He's off to puppy school next week with Thing. I think it's more for Thing because he spoils him. And Saxon thinks he's the alpha male of the household. Our vet runs a puppy school. And yes, I think he needs to go and be taught he's not the boss of the house. Reeves has a friend in Victoria uh, someone online to do with gaming she has a um, a business a grooming dog business and with all the lockdowns it's affected her business she has a website with things for sale and we got when we got sex and he said would you mind buying a few things off her website to support her so I did and I bought some savory live dog training treats now 50% of the purchase of these goes to um, rescue dogs so yeah, that's for Saxon. And being a puppy, he was a little bit smelly on the nose and you can't keep bathing him all the time. So I bought him some Hound and Soul Conditioning Mist Spray for his fur. And it's called a fur baby and it's supposed to smell like a baby with talcum powder. And guess what? It does. Reeve said, my God, that smells like a new baby that's got talcum powder. So yes, I bought him some just a couple of things to support her and for Saxon, who's definitely going to be quite a big dog. He's still putting on about 500 grams a week. He went to the vet for needles this week and the vet said, I think he's going to be bigger than you thought, but he is going to be an outside dog. He loves the outside. He hates being inside. He chases the moths. The only thing that scares him is... One of our neighbours last week had a bit of a tiff and they were yelling at each other and he came bolting in. He hit the glass door so hard he nearly knocked himself out. So I've had to put some little decals low on the glass door so he can see it rather than trying to break his way through it. I haven't done much crochet this week. I did one big project. I was inspired by Wishes for Wings with Rose showing all the beautiful shawls the ladies are making and donating. I'm not a great shawl maker. I struggle making shawls and ponchos for some reason. Maybe I just keep forgetting to check my stitch count. But I did make a shawl this week. I don't know if I'll give it away or sell it. But here it is. I made the candle and cake um, shawl. I've made the cowl before, but I just made it longer. It is a tutorial by Krista at The Secret Yarnery. I love it. It always looks nice. I love the cowl. So I thought I'll try going bigger because it did work out for me the first time and make it a shawl. I use the yarn that, and she's changed her channel name. I think it's Nana's Crochets Michelle. Nana Crochets Michelle. She sent me this yarn when I won the Odyssey hook in one of the raffles. She sent me some Mandela Sparkle, two balls of it, and I have used that. Now, when I use cake yarn, I'm not great on colour controlling. I just usually let it flow. But I ended up con colour controlling this about here because one of the balls had some knots in it, and I don't like manufacturer knots in the middle of my project even when I'm making something I always work it out that the knots go on the edges and that's when I decided I have to color control but that's the size I got I could have gotten probably a little bigger but I started to panic I'd ruin it but I love this and I think it turned out really nice it is a great tutorial easy for a beginner if you want to make something special definitely put a link to Krista's 
um, tutorial in the description below and any channels I mention. So that was my week, guys. Some yarn that didn't smell great, some yarn that's great, charity knitting that was disappointing, but hey, there are always ways around things. So to my loyal subscribers, I hope you enjoyed my yarn adventure. To those new subscribers, I hope you stick around. I know my yarn adventures can be a little weird, as someone told me, but hey, that's me. Till next time, take care, stay safe. Remember, life is an adventure, so have one crafty day having a yarn adventure. Bye for now.